Hey everybody, how you doing? Happy Tuesday! Yeah, we got a Tuesday here. My good friend and co-host Edward, the special Edward, Ed Molesky. Edward Scissorhands Molesky. Edward Scissorhands Molesky. Gonna be chopping up some paper today, are you? Woo. You want a haircut? Uh, you know, I could use a haircut. I do got some, a haircut scheduled go, for the 19th. Do, go do some trading in the marijuana sector. <laughs> good one! Trading in the marijuana sector. Haircut, get it? <laughs> Anyways. Enough of that. What do you think this is? A comedy? No. This is news, man. News. Hard news. Real news. Not fake news. Good news. Yeah. Minus letter show rundown. That means us. That means today. Show open. James and Ed. Opening comments. I think that's what we're going through right now. Would you say? They really made a comment about the... Uh, about the... Uh, oh, you're just going to comment on the well, comments the, 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 the This trade war thing. Trade war. You know, like the... You know, they're... they're the NBA is involved. Yeah, now, that, now they got they got a uh, they they blocked a bunch of technology companies from doing business because of what they're doing to the Uyghur uh, Muslim. You, you know about more yeah. about this than I do. Ah. but this thing seems to be getting uh, crazier and crazier. Like it's which thing? The, well, the, the 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 fight for I guess for t the taxes. I think that you talking to the taxes. You mean the loot? What taxes? Well, you know, tariffs and who gets oh, what. Oh, oh, oh. Like I the think it's just... There's only so much money and everybody wants more. Yeah, I think it's just a bunch of clowns posturing that really don't have that much of an effect on our lives or business, except when they pull out the toys with the gunpowder in them. Other than that, let them go and imagine their little imaginary world. Meanwhile, we'll try to make sense of the mess that they do in the process. But sure. Make a little money, have a little fun, get down tonight. Mm -mm. Get down tonight. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Make a little love. Make a little love. <laughs> um, okay. Today we have a uh, big surprise. Laura McCallum with the news, of course. Eric Mauf is here. He is the CEO of Jushi Holdings. Jushi. J-U-S-H-I. Not sushi. Jushi. And does that make you, yeah, exactly. Um, guess who's back for another conversation? Our old pal Keith Merker from Weed MD. Yeah, they is had there. quite the opening for their, uh, uh, the, they had a big harvest last week. They're in the midst of a big harvest. Oh, yeah, okay. Yes. How many fact, acres? 100. Uh, no, sorry, 27. 20, that's big. It's pretty big. Pretty big, actually. I, 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 I. Do they, do they get added value? Like, do they change the valuation in their inventory as soon as it's harvested? In other words, when it's in the field, it's worth X. But when it's in the barn, I use well, the word actually, barn. Well, actually, I don't know. I'm just have to go it. through their financials because the companies all seem to have their own way of accounting for the biological assets at their various phases of right. existence from seed to sale. So I know for a fact that organogram allocates value according to where the plant is in its timeline. So in other words, if it's 80% of the way through its growth cycle till it gets on the shelf, they, they give it 80% of the sale price that they expect to get for it as a finished product. Some do that, some don't. And as to who does and who doesn't, I do not know. And I don't really care. It's like if you're not making any money at all, I don't care how you move the shells around or where the pea <laughs> is, I am not playing. Anyways, uh, on that note, you know, the cannabis uh, market is having another uh, down day. Yeah, but I didn't. Down more. But, but we made it back over 30. Yeah, yeah, yes. Well, there's a few little brighter spots, I think. But now, did, did you see where Alifia has got an issue with yeah. Afria? Yeah. Why can't Alifia they? Alifia they, they and Afria have an issue. <clears throat> they both lift. <laughs> Alifia and Afria. I mean, wasn't one of them supposed to supply Tilray? Well, well, uh, uh, Alifia, sorry, Afria is supposed to supply Alifia through, through another company, I think. Through, yeah. Emblem or something. Well, 
You know, if, uh, and I don't know if anybody had a chance to read the uh, little morning missive, my theme in my daily e-letter today was that the uh, financial stresses of the declining value yes. of the cannabis sector is starting to exert pressures on the companies themselves. Well, and the people. And the people. Well, the people being the companies. So the you people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that was my point. So oh, Jim yeah. Monahan left uh, Hexo, CFO, just up and out of there. And uh, what else? Uh, well, it, I think if you go through, you'll be able to read. There's lots of news, lots of departures, lots of... Well, the that, turnstile... Yeah. Is, well, this is what starts to happen when yeah. the market falls apart, is that yeah. there's a fight over what's going to happen with the last remaining money and what to do going forward as a corporate strategy in the absence of the ability to raise capital. And people start looking at each other and going, well, we've got to cut back on the payroll because the payroll is the... Uh, well, the exactly. monthly burn and, and uh, somebody's got to go here. And do you think, like how, like for instance, there's a lot of uh, 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 executives in the industry or, or, or business guys that think, okay, we're going to make a go of this. But as it looks like it's get, getting harder and harder to raise money, do you think that might make them say, you know what? I got other things to do with my life. I'm going to go somewhere and do something else. Well, this is exactly the point. I'm thinking, especially if you're like a highfalutin CFO who had a highfalutin job with a highfalutin paycheck, yeah. and your world was not characterized by emergency and, oh my God, we can't raise money, and, oh my God, what are we going to do? It was characterized by, oh, shall I go to the club today or shall I go get drunk after right, work? Right. That was the extent of your concerns. And now suddenly you're under pressure and everybody's yelling at you and shareholders yeah. are calling you. It's like, of course they're going to start jumping ship. This is not what they signed up for. They thought they were walking into a maturing, you know, Fortune 500 It's going to take a while for this industry to exert or start to show its ability to generate cash. Well, you know, actually that's a good point. Um, but Keith, I, I put that question to Keith point blank. When are you going to be profitable? And... You know, are you going to... Did he answer the question? He answered the question somewhat directly, and but he gave a great overarching answer that, uh, you know, constituted not forward-looking statements and not guidance. However, he was unequivocal in his expectation that the company was going to be profitable, not just in one quarter, but on a sustainable basis in 2020. So, and he did it in a credible way. He didn't exaggerate. He didn't. He's a good guy. I like, I've always yeah. liked him. Well, we've always liked, we've always liked Keith. Um, okay. So Keith is on the show around 3.30. Eric Mouth is here about 3.20. And now here's Laura McCallum with Z News. Here's what's making cannabis headlines this Tuesday, October 8th, 2019. Aurora Cannabis and CTT Pharmaceutical Holdings announced the successful commercialization of CTT's cannabinoid-infused sublingual wafers. The new cannabis product line has been launched by Aurora in the Canadian medical cannabis market under the brand name Dissolve Strips. Aurora has an ownership interest in CTT of approximately 9%, with a warrant allowing it to increase its stake to 42.5%, and access to CTT sublingual wafers drug delivery technology, which is patent protected or patent pending in multiple jurisdictions. Cantamp Therapeutics has signed a binding letter of intent to establish a joint venture with world-class extractions. WCE will install certain extraction and processing systems at Cantab's production facility in Markham, Ontario. Cantab is expected to utilize the systems upon receiving its licensed producer status from Health Canada. Fire & Flower Holdings has closed the acquisition of certain assets from wholly owned subsidiaries of Cannabis Cowboy. The transaction has resulted in the company acquiring eight additional retail stores in locations across Alberta. Cannabis Cowboy has received an aggregate purchase price of $5.65 million, consisting of $4.52 million in cash and 826,930 common shares of FFHC. MedMen Enterprises announced the mutual agreement to terminate the business combination agreement dated December 23, 2018, pursuant to which MedMen was to acquire Pharmacan. MedMen and its board have determined that focusing on leveraging the company's retail brand, its leadership position in California, and its digital platform to grow the business will create greater shareholder value than the completion of the transaction. The Supreme Cannabis Company announced that Blisco Cannabis, Supreme Cannabis' premium wellness brand, has received licensing approval from Health Canada for the sale of cannabis oils from its facility in Langley, British Columbia. 
The cannabis oil sales license granted by Health Canada allows Blisco to sell full spectrum CBD oil products. And that's your news for today. To keep up to date on all things cannabis, visit the Cannabis Daily on MidasLetter.com. Um, subcutaneous. Subcutaneous. Subcutaneous versus sublingual under the tongue. So what do you think about lingus? Sublingus. Like cuna. Cuna. Ooh, careful. Careful. Thin ice. Almost thin said ice. it. Almost said it. Thin, thin ice. Um, we saw that Aurora had purchased CTT or a piece thereof for its sublingual wafer. Okay. Now, is this got a spiritual connotation, I'm wondering? Like like the host? <laughs> is that the what you're thinking? Well, I'm like thinking, the Eucharist, yeah. the Eucharist. The Eucharist. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> free I, wine, I free wine. Like uh, uh, certain, I, I'll just tell you the story. Oh, thank you. Is it, you know, we, there was a, a, f a funeral uh -huh. and they had a mass because it was a very Catholic family. And then right. some of the members of the family, you know, the time to go to, and I, I just went and got my Eucharist, you know, I popped the, popped the pill. And they, and, and I hadn't gone to confession or anything like that, so I don't know if I was eligible, wide receiver, I don't know, who knows. <laughs> Whoa! Anyway, to make a long story short, well, I said to certain people, I said, why didn't you go? He said, well, I haven't been to church for a while. And I said, who gives a shit? They, it's all bullshit, right? <laughs> well, well, I mean, come on. Well, I'm pretty sure that what the... If I, uh, what if I looked at the priest and I spoke to him telepathically and I said, mm, he said, mm, okay, and you go... Well, I don't think it's, I think it's, oh. <laughs> if I know the priest that I've been hearing whoa, about anyways, whoa. I think that's the whole religious experience, isn't it? I know. Father uh, O'Malley uh, with his uh, Ronnie Ronnie handsy little ways and I uh, yeah, I don't know. The real higher been. ups in that whole hierarchy are in Rome, you know. Yeah, I know. They're they got protected. their own They got a country. wall around there. They got the biggest vault and they the got a billion dollars. Place. I know. They wear the finest. Yeah, there's something there. Raymond. Raymond. What do you like that word? Ooh, hey, that R A I M E N T. Very regal. <laughs> sounds beyond regal. It sounds divine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yes. Not not a lot of religion going on here. Um, you know, I think we should take a look at the cannabis charts uh, just okay. because. Uh, Anything you want me to uh, talk about? Look up. Weed? Chart? How about weed? Technically analyze. Yeah. Why don't we start with weed? I like to see weed. You know, because I, I I think weed's sort of still the Main okay. dietary item of choice for countless Canadians. Did you catch the debate last night among the six imbeciles? <laughs> I, I, oh my gosh. I'd have a hard time watching Tell you that. what, I'm taking down the sign in my front yard. I'm not voting for anybody. I mean, these people. Yeah, no, no. It's, it, was, it was an absolute embarrassment. Um, what can I say? The actual... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say anything further because now no, it's well, getting personal. I'm to just not to say that. something would detract from the whole thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, canopy, $30.12. So, so you know, we, we had a contra rally here uh, a while back, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then we had a correction back to the low. So we got a low there, mm -hmm. got a low there, mm -hmm. and this, this rally can't seem to get going at all. Mm. If it breaks down here and starts setting new lows, I think we're going to knock off another 20, 30... I'm not, I'm not, this isn't a professional, I'm just saying. Sounds like you're predicting a stock price if I didn't know I don't want to predict myself. a stock price. Are you a financial advisor? I used to be. You better not be. I used to be. <laughs> you used to be. What happened? You turned so many people's experience into your money mm. and their experience. Mm. Ah! Yeah. Brokers. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. Um, what, else okay. can, what else can we so, talk so, about? So, so what, do, what does this candle mean? Look at the candle. I'm looking at the candle. Which one? This one. Da 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 da! Oh yeah. Well, well, well look at it. it's what trying. What do you call that? Now that's that's a that's a uh, an a exaggerated bullshit. doji. Exaggerated doji. Here, I'll take. I'll show you. Sounds like it's run by promoters if it's exaggerated. <laughs> okay, so an exaggerated doji is that positive? Is it going to continue? That's the, it, there's indecision. There's indecision with this. I got to go back because to the daily. The, when is low? Is it because the high? tail and the head, the tail and the wick are big the wick. same? Not a big wick. Small you know, wick. Yeah, yeah, and, and it, so so you can fellow. have drives just a, big a, a line across. That's the that's the real indecision. This this has got indecision. See yeah, that? this has got indecision written all over it. Watch, indecision. Hmm. Look at that. Indecision. So if you were a betting man, uh, it looks to me like if I was if I was a betting man, I'd say lower. I 
I'm going to not bet, but I'm going to suggest that this looks like consolidation to me. This looks like the bottom to me. Because the lows are not lower, the highs are not higher, uh, it's unresolved. I, I, I would give you, I would say yes, except my experience is that you'd like to see a bigger base. This is only a few days here. See that? Now we've got that there. We, we probably need to see some further testing. Test. Testing. Test. One, two, three. Test. Yeah. But no, but so, what do you think? Say it ain't so. What do you think? Okay. What do I think? I think, uh, I think the bottom's in. I don't like, I'll tell you what I don't like. When I've learned that, that you know, the, the adage, the trend is your friend, I've learned this. When in doubt, go with the trend. And what I don't like is the, the Bollinger lines are pointing south. Like they're, they're going from... So slightly. Well, yeah, but no, but, but there. And there's another one. And the moving averages. So th there's a trend there that's established. This is only a three-month chart. But I... The trend is going down. It's slightly so down. So how, if it's going lower, is the trend possibly your friend? Unless, of course, you're short. Well, because... They, no, the trend would be your friend, but you'd say, okay, I'm not going to buy this because I don't like the trend line. Oh. And that your, your friend helped you out there. So when the trend reverses, it, it's going to have th th these lines. Well, we saw, we saw some evidence here, right? Yeah. There. And then the sideways, but then started to look at. Well, that's what I'm saying. It looks like back up there over down here. Well. Over down here, it looks like it could go dipping upward. You know, you gotta you gotta use some poetic license here. You gotta you gotta. Yeah, just I'm making it all up. I don't. Never mind some. Okay. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, you know, I think we're gonna talk to Eric Mouth now. The uh, saying, the S and P. I'm joined now by Jushi Holdings Inc. founder and president Eric Mouth. Jushi's trading on Neo under the symbol J U S H dot B. Hey, Eric, how are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, you bet. Eric, what, can you give me an overview? What is Jushi Holdings up to? You know, we're one of the U.S. multi-state uh, operators. So we operate in seven states. Uh, we are a predominantly retail and extraction and processing uh, uh, focused organization. Uh, 25 stores, uh, four big extraction and processing uh, uh, facilities under construction and, you know, just trying to build everything in the U.S. in what is a really relatively turbulent market at the moment. Right. Right. Okay. So which states are you in? Well, we're in Virginia, uh, where we have one of five licenses. That's a vertically integrated uh, license. Mm -hmm. We're in uh, Pennsylvania, where we have 15 retail locations. That's 10% of the market, which is the legal limit. We have hemp extraction and processing in New York. We have uh, a extraction and processing in Ohio. We have uh, two additional mid uh, at the mid state uh, retails, which we can't discuss on, on this call. It's still subject to some some non disclosed information. We have extraction processing and cultivation in Las Vegas, and we have four high profile retail locations in California. Wow. Okay. Well, that's. Uh... That's quite a quite a footprint. Um, so, how, well, how did Jushi get founded? What's behind? Who's behind the company? What's sort of the driving uh, sort of ethos of of Jushi? You know, we started the company on a relatively simple thesis. We'd been investing, starting up in Canada. One of our first invest, investments was in Organigram. That's ah. how we got to know um, Dennis Arisnalt, who's actually one of the founders of Jushi. Oh. Um, and as we were looking at Canada, we were pretty convinced that the, the U.S. market would follow a similar-ish trend. You know, again, uh, the U.S. was going to be much more uh, fragmented because of the states versus the federal system. But we, we, we anticipated that we would move over time to general consensus across uh, the U.S. on legalization. Mm -hmm. And that it was an opportune time two and a half years ago to start building a multi-state operator. And we really built it on kind of four, four beliefs. One, we were tired of being private investors and putting our hard-earned money to work, supporting current license holders who themselves had put no capital at risk. Right. So, you know, we would put up 90% of the capital for 30% of the equity that put up 
10% of the capital for 70% of the equity. Mm -hmm. And so we thought we had an opportunity to get better returns by doing it ourselves. Sure. We also didn't think there was a, an abundance of high quality management teams and we thought we could bring that to bear. We thought that this would be a distressed industry because of uh, access to capital being an issue. There are a lot of things that make this to you know, generally be a difficult uh, market to operate in. And we thought we had the skill set, ex-distressed investment bankers, you know, ability to really uh, manage risk as well as to manage documentation and legislative risk. We thought right. we could do a really good job on that. And with the acquisition of the clinic, which is one of the oldest running uh, uh, cannabis operators in Colorado with some really amazing people in it. We thought that that brought in the operational uh, aspect. So if you add that all together, we felt that we had the financial backing, the M&A acumen, the risk uh, uh, analysis capabilities, and great operators. And we thought, put that together, you can you know, create a really competitive, dynamic company that we think is going to have a very good long-term prognosis in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the uh, focus seems to be, I mean, just looking at what you've got now, big, big in the Northeast, which is heavy in population. You've got California in there as well. You've got a couple of things going that you can't really talk about. So is your goal to basically operate in every state that uh, permits cannabis? Yeah, I think I would be a little bit ambitious. I think what we like to do is focus on the big medical only markets on the East Coast. So we like New York, uh, which will be reopening for applications. We like to win applications versus buy businesses. We love Pennsylvania, fifth largest population in the US by state. Um, so those are areas we'll continue to focus. We wanna go deep and wide in those states. Uh, we like the Midwest, we like Illinois, we like Ohio. And then we like the big adult use markets of California, Nevada. So we like the approach of being in what is already robust adult use markets. We like to be in the emerging medical markets that we think may turn to adult use down the, the, down the, down the road. So a nice mix of the two. So not just buying long term growth uh, today, but investing in markets that we think will turn into incredibly lucrative markets over time. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you find the competitive environment for uh, winning licenses? Well, you know, we just won a very competitive license in California, in Culver City, one of three. There were 28 applicants. You know, we come from a long background of people in uh, cannabis. So the clinic had a very successful uh, applications team. And then within, you know, investment banking, many of us have, have a very long history in winning competitive situations. So I think when you add the two, I think we have an incredibly thoughtful approach to how we win licenses. I think we've got the financial backing, we've got the acumen, we've got the pedigree and the people that run the organization, and then we have tremendous operating capabilities. So we feel very good about when we focus on a market we want to win in, I think we have a 50-50 shot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is the available license pool in places like Florida, Nevada, California, is that becoming saturated at this point in your estimation, or is there lots of room left to grow there? So let's talk about California. That's a good one. I, you know, as you know, California is, in theory, an unlimited license market. Mm -hmm. But according to the New York, uh, the LA Times, in an article published about maybe eight, nine months ago, 80% of the local jurisdictions in California do not allow cannabis. Mm. Let me repeat. 80% of the local jurisdictions in California don't allow cannabis. That doesn't sound like an unlimited market to me. So let me run you through our portfolio. In, um, uh, in San Diego, there are 30 uh, deemed licenses in San Diego, 20 are open. The other 10 are battling to find real estate in acceptable areas. So we like that, that's a limited license market. Culver City, we're one of three. Malibu, we're one of two. And in Santa Barbara, we're one of three. That to me sounds like limited license markets. 
Yeah, boy, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I had no idea that the, the total area was 80%. That's, uh, that's astounding. So when people say California is the largest market, it's really not then. Well, it is the largest market uh, by definition, but it is highly regulated. Now, the number of 80% is of all jurisdictions, clearly in the high population urban areas. Right. Like uh, LA, they're far less restrictive. But yeah, I mean, the, the NIMBY issue in, in, in the United States, it's, you know, not in my backyard. You have a place like uh, Malibu that votes in favor of um, adult use well into the 60s and 70 percent. And yet they ultimately want to still regulate the number of cannabis dispensaries in your town. That sounds incredibly reasonable. And so I think if you're able to be the first mover in those markets, First of all, you get the best location. And then secondly, it's going to just be a limited license market because I don't think many towns feel the need to have unlimited or 20 cannabis stores in their town. I think they look at it and say two or three feels like the right number. Sure. Okay, well, it sounds like you've really got it figured out there, Eric. Uh, let's leave it there for now. That's a great introduction. We'll come back to you in due course and uh, see how you're making out. Thanks for joining me today. Great, thanks a lot. Really enjoyed it. If you like the show, you'll love our website. Visit us at www.midasletter.com for interviews with key CEOs, cannabis news, and to subscribe to our newsletter. Maybe we could do the show from Strathroy tomorrow. Hey, everybody, we're back. What Hi. did you think of Jushi? That's quite impressive. Here's a company that we've never ha heard of that's got the sheet is going on in eight different states. Like, this is how crowded the cannabis space is What, what is the product uh, Juicy has? What is Juicy. it? Juicy. Is it a ha edible? They have uh, the whole nine yards. No, it's, oh, uh, oh, it's okay. dispensaries, it it's growing, it's extraction, it's integrated. It's, it's incredible. You missed it. You weren't watching? <laughs> it was on right here. We were here. Got me. Right before your very eyes. Anyways, uh, yeah, so Juicy, there's, there's another company that, you know, when, when the stench comes off of the pile of you know refuse we call cannabis paper right now Jushi's one of the ones that's is going to you know people are going to turn around and say how was it that we valued this thing so poorly and why didn't we buy it then and anyways there'll be a lot of that going on just like now there's a lot of people who are looking at the stock or they've probably sold or they're thinking of selling and they're going to be like how why didn't i sell when it was up here it's going to be for the same reason that you don't buy when it's down here you're hesitating you got no sense of conviction you got no plan man you got to have a plan stick to your plan if you don't have a plan you're not going to make it you're going down man anyways what? Why? Oh, that was Scottish, damn you. Uh, okay, good. Anyways, um, yeah, so let's take a look at some more cannabis stocks, shall we? Okay. Oh, actually, Ed, I would like you to examine the chart for uh, the price of gold, please. Give me your two cents worth on that. Well. Because it's not doing what it should. It, it's, it, you know, I got to tell you, when I look at some of the charts of some of the things that are tied in, I, 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 it looks like a bit of a rollover, and that the best example... Rollover, rollover. Beethoven, rollover, Beethoven. 99 in and sitting in a bed, one fell out, and the other one said, rollover, rollover. Why did I <laughs> get myself... So, All right, so, so what's the price of gold doing? Okay, Never okay, mind what that. You, okay, let's... Yeah, you're getting me on a tangent here. Uh-oh. Gold. <laughs> I don't want to see that. Gold. Okay. So here we go. This is a six-month chart, mm -hmm. and this this is this is the ETF that tracks gold, uh, dollar for dollar, one for one. Look at there's there's the big moving average. There's the little faster moving average, shorter term moving average, and and like we saw with how the the, the all these lines are pointing south for weed. They're, this one's pointing north. We're not done with that chart yet, damn you. Okay, we're not done. Okay, <laughs> we'll clean it up. We'll clean it up and start over. Uh, okay, so here we are. Yeah. So so we've had a run up to here. Yeah. And then we're moving sideways. We're, it looks like we're 
moving sideways, biding our time to go higher, although huh. this high is a little higher than this high, which is higher than that action in there. I'm not saying that there isn't going to be more action, but... The highs are getting lower. Just... And the lows are getting lower. You know, I mean, look, we, and we've had we've had some static moves in the S&P. The S&P, we've noticed, hasn't really done much. Yeah. So why would gold do much? Well, this is the thing. I don't understand why gold isn't reacting to the increasing tensions in Turkey with, uh, with fake-ass President Donald Trump deciding to abandon the Kurds, their allies, and leave them to the Syrians. Like, what kind of, what kind of gutless, spineless, feckless, untrustworthy... Feckless. I like traitorous that one. ally is the United States and leaving their former allies the Kurds, their allies the Kurds, in the lurch. Like what is that? Have they done that? Yes, they're pulling out the troops. They're letting the Syrians go in there and mow them down, or rather the Turks go in there and mow them on down. It's just disgusting. Anyways, uh, hopefully, um, you know, karma. Karma comes around. Karma, karma comes around. And now, and why, why Turkey? I guess Turkey's got a pretty big military presence, right? So that's... Well, Turkey has a vested interest in mitigating Syrian aggression, being on the southern border and all. Oh, they're right next door. Yes, yes, yes. So, so Syria... Uh, on the south border Tur of Turkey Turkey's lies the Syria. gateway between Europe and uh, the Middle East. Correct. Okay. That's why it's uh, called Constantinople now. It used to be called Istanbul. Or now it's in Istanbul. It used to be called Constantinople. No, they changed it back. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just kidding. That would be cool. You know what? We've had that name for a couple hundred years now. We don't like it. Anyways, uh, yeah. Well. Tragic. tragic. You, know, you know, it used to be the name of uh, Tokyo. What's the old name for Tokyo? Hong Kong? Edo. Edo? E-D-O. No kidding. I thought... Edo. Isn't Edo, Edo was the, in the same location as Tokyo? Well, it's the same, it's the same city. No. They changed the name. It's just like they changed the name I thought they Berlin. The they had a Berlin city down here. Berlin? At, and they changed it to Kitchener. No. What? Really? The yeah, city here in Kitchener was called Berlin? Yeah. Damn. Did, you didn't know that? We could have had Everybody West Berlin, that. East Berlin, and East, Canadian East, Berlin. East Berlin. Canadian Berlin. Like we got Canadian London. Except we're not doing Brexit over there, are we? Oh, God, well, it's so confusing. You know, politicians really make a dog's breakfast out of everything. Do we really need politicians? No. Like, isn't it time for us to sort of like manage ourselves along the lines they, of they like They say the only thing governments should do is protect you. That's I mean, protect you from either... But uh, if everybody had just, you know, a little bit of mutual respect for each other's boundaries and... No, that would never work. We're talking the human race here. I don't know. Bloodthirsty, killing You know what? There's an 18-year, like today, a 14-year-old, either today or last night, a 14-year-old boy was shot in front of his mother by another 14-year-old and an 18-year-old in Hamilton. This is terrible. This, this is hard to comprehend. Like, what are they, 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 they said, we're going to go get this guy. Like, didn't they think that what's going to happen after we get him? Like, now what? Yeah. yeah, it's just too much, you know. I've, and in some respects, I've sort of escaped issues, right? The real crazy ones, you know. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, amazing. Yeah. Okay. Well, enough about the government because they're not going to solve any problems. They're just going to cause them. Yeah. Um, elsewhere in the universe. Anything you want me to look up here? Fire and flower. Fire and Flower just closed on an acquisition. They got a bunch of assets off of uh, G Tech. G Tech got four million bucks back thanks to that. And uh, I'm wondering what that did for uh, Fire and Flower shares. Yeah. FAF. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, let's take a look. Maybe the one that moved up is uh, G Tech. Um, well, at least let's hope that it stopped moving down. Dollar eighteen down two. No, but nothing. Two dollars. Down two cents. Oh, fire and flower. Yeah, yeah. Now let's look at G Tech. G Tech, which came out at a dollar fifty, is now at twenty four and a half cents down, ten percent on the day, two and a half cents. So nothing impressive. Hey, you know, nobody cares. Nobody seems to care. Well, I think G Tech is probably one of the ones that people are looking at and saying, "Is there a business there?" Well, I don't know. 
like, uh, I mean, there's some companies that, yes, there's a business, like WeedMD. You know what? Let's talk to, let's let let's, Keith, Keith Merker tell us about okay, WeedMD. Okay, let's do that. Keith Merker joins me now, CEO of WeedMD. Keith, welcome back. Thanks for having me. How is the harvest? The harvest is ongoing. Ongoing? Yeah, we started a couple of weeks ago, and we are now sort of at that inflection point where things start to ramp up significantly. Yeah. Mother Nature is cooperating with the weather, and the team is, is out there working diligently. How many harvesting. acres are you harvesting? We've got 27 acres. And is this hemp or cannabis proper? It is cannabis proper. Woo! So uh, THC and CBD. We got high THC, we've got high CBD, we've got a blend of both, whatever wow. suits your fancy. Okay, so now pop my delusion. Is cannabis grown outdoor qualified for premium dried cannabis in the context of a government regulated store? Great question. And I will answer it a little bit. Um, I, I will answer it like this. It is still early days. We are harvesting some great, great buds. Our, our ghost strain haze strain, for instance, seven feet wide by seven feet tall. The apex colas are being harvested as we speak. They look lovely. They're wonderful. Mm. I wish that we were able to sell them as is, mm. by weight, as you do produce. Mm. And say, and, and that day is coming. The day may come, but unfortunately, for the time being, we need to chop it up into little bits and, and, and produce you know, 3.5 gram uh, skews right. for the provinces and five gram skews for our medical patients, for instance. Um, but what we are seeing so far is, is high, high quality buds that we're, that we're receiving from the outdoor field. Great. Um, it has yet to go through the full drying, curing, testing process, et cetera, et cetera. But we anticipate having a bumper crop, not only from a yield perspective, but from a quality perspective. Cool. And next year, how many acres will you cultivate? So 27 this year, we have the ability with our current property to get to 100 next year. Okay. How many pounds of feedstock does one acre of cannabis produce in terms of dried premium input? So our early estimates were just shy of a ton an acre. So... That's dried. That's dried product. A ton, 2,000 kilograms. That's... Two 1,000 kilograms? 1,000, yeah. <laughs> one, so you were, you were converting to pounds perhaps, but right. yeah. So, uh, so roughly a ton per, per acre. Hmm. Um, we, it, it, and again, it's still early days for us for me to sort of put a stamp on that and say, here's what we achieved. Right. But I can tell you again, going back to those ghost drain haze plants, we anticipate some of those coming out at two kilograms per plant. Wow. A thousand plants per acre. Wow. And how much do you get for a ton of cannabis grown indoors? It's an evolving industry. So I could answer that question in a lot of different ways. Hypothetically. So whether it's retail, whether we're selling bulk, whether we're selling trim. Mm -hmm. And you know, trim, biomass, for instance, in some cases we will sell to folks who use it for extraction. Sure. And they're paying these days not by the gram, but by the cannabinoid. So there's a very big delta in our revenue based on whether that trim product has 10% cannabinoid content or 20. Mm -hmm. So that's just one example. So it's very much a moving target. If I was to ballpark some figures for you, what we could sell at retail, we're getting four to five dollars a gram. What we're selling um, as as wholesale biomass, so extract grade product, uh, is closer to two dollars a gram these days. Mm. Okay. Again, with a lot of variability. Right. All right. Here's the question that the only question all your investors care about. How soon till you're profitable? Pending the outcome of this outdoor crop. Oh. Uh, we would anticipate having a, a very successful Q4. We're not giving guidance, and so I'm going to choose my words carefully, but a very successful Q4. And pending the quantity and quality of that product, that will carry over into 2020. Mm -hmm. With the 18 rooms we now have online in the greenhouse, our forecast would be to achieve a situation where this company is sustainable for the long run by mid-2020, if not before. Wow. Okay, so that's great. I'm <clears throat> reading nothing but doom and gloom and prognostications <laughs> of the sky falling in the cannabis space. Yeah. And um, I know that's not true. You know that's not true. We've just got a simple case where the speculative market is now expected to deliver a uh, a fully mature commercial EBITDA, which that's not how it happens. And yeah. for some reason, the people in the cannabis, or the people investing in the cannabis space have forgotten that and have started to jump off of cliffs and out windows. 
Um, do you think that the cannabis uh, revenue picture for the whole industry is going to emulate what WeedMD is doing, or would you consider WeedMD an outlier in terms of the level of success you're going to achieve financially? I've been saying it for ages, and you can look back into your archives because we've talked about this in a manner of speaking before. And I'm a firm believer that, you know, as we hit the end of 2019 and heading into 2020, especially, there's going to be, quite frankly, a lot of blood on the streets. There's mm -hmm. going to be uh, failures in this industry. Um, whereas in 2017, you could throw a dart at the wall and, and, or buy the, buy the index and you were going to win. These days you have to be more selective. You've got to pick the winners and you've got to select them and, and, and select them out of what is going to be a field where there are losers. Mm -hmm. You can get that if you'd like. Uh, that would not be appropriate. <laughs> All right. So, um, finally, Keith, what is the uh, outlook in terms of production for 2020? So we're going to exit 2019 at about a 50 ton per annum run rate hmm. with respect to production. Wow. Uh, 2020, we have the ability to get to about 150. And this is just from the Strathroy site. And that is a combination of both the outdoor field and the greenhouse. We are at a position right now where WeedMD has approached this, I think, very strategically. We haven't gone guns blazing and built out as much and everything that we possibly could from a cultivation standpoint. Because as the industry evolves, cultivation um, becomes less important only from the perspective of there was once upon a time where square footage or licensed square footage or, or annual production really mattered to the market. Mm -hmm. Right now, what matters to the market is to your earlier point, show me the money, show me the revenue, but also very importantly, show me a cash flow positive, sustainable business. And so we're running through those iterations right now of whether given now that we're in a more limited capital scarce, I'll say you know, there's more capital scarcity than there was back in the good old days. Um, so you've got to be more careful with how you spend it, how you allocate it across the organization. So to me, if we're looking at um, building out another greenhouse, or allocating it towards uh, making sure that our supply chain is locked down and airtight and, and super, super successful. I'm probably gonna choose that latter portion versus more cultivation at this stage in the game. So we're running through those scenarios right now as we build our 2020 budget. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you ever want some real excitement, come drop by the WeedMD War Room for budget talk because it is a thrilling, thrilling opportunity mm. <laughs> to see what goes on behind the scenes as sort of the sausage is made when it comes to the company. All right. Um, so again, we got the opportunity to get to a massive production footprint in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, but I think more importantly is, is that we deliver a profitable company for our shareholders. You bet. All right, Keith, we'll leave it there for now. Thanks again for coming in. We'll talk to you again soon. Great to be here. Thanks. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Make sure you never miss a show by subscribing to our YouTube channel and clicking on the little notifications bell. If you're interested in getting monthly actionable investment ideas in the cannabis space to your inbox, subscribe to the newsletter at MidasLetter.com. Um, boy. What do you think? Weed MD contender? They look like uh, they got things really, I mean, just looking at those fields, they look like they're- Those are some good looking plants. Yeah, they're really good looking some plants. Some big fat colas on there, reminiscent of donkey's ears. <laughs> Don't you think? Like, didn't they remind you of donkey's ears, Ed? Why are you laughing? Donkey's ears? Yeah. Like, <laughs> look at this. Wait, there's one shot coming up here of a particularly large cola that Okay, that, well, it was back there. Uh, <laughs> well, okay. No, we're not going to play the whole thing again. Damn it. Um, it's on there, reminiscent of donkey. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, boy, we're having a real technological moment. I wanted to say hello to some of our uh, loyal audience uh, who are here. Uh, Immortal Warrior Angel. Hmm, don't believe I've seen you here before. Keith Porter, hey, how are you doing? Uh, Reefer Al joint. Hello, Reefer Al. Um, Gotta be one of the most loyal fans we've ever had in our lives. Thank God for it. Did Reefer you say Al. royal fans? Loyal. Oh, okay. Royal. I would say royal if I couldn't pronounce my L's properly, which mm -hmm. would imply a mm -hmm. speech impediment, which I don't think you have. Think I have right now. Um, yeah, so Reefer Al's there. 
Uh, big conversation going on with a whole bunch of people in the chat room. Um, we saw Supreme Cannabis uh, announce that uh, Blisco Cannabis, uh, its subsidiary, has received licensing approval from Health Canada for the sale of cannabis oils. Now, um, it's interesting to me that companies are still announcing, you know, vape products that uh, are, you know, a big question mark. E-cigarettes e are banned today at Wal Walgreens in the U.S. and another uh, drugstore. Really? So the future of vaping is very much in question. Probably still you can do it, but, you know, you got to be asking yourself, why would you? Yeah, we have the CEO of Vapen is here tomorrow. There is a company that suffered uh, substantially since all of the deaths started associated with vaping. It's interesting that the uh, Center for Disease Controls and the FDA have sort of lumped it squarely as the, they say the only consistent uh, aspect of all of the hospitalizations and deaths has been the presence of THC. And then they go on in the same release to say, but we haven't identified the culprit yet, and when we do, we'll issue a warning. Yeah. So now, if it sounds to me like they were identifying the culprit, and they were saying the culprit was THC. But so how can they, in the same I mean, I press think, release... I think there's some people that are getting this lung issue that aren't doing THC. I think they're doing, like, bubblegum flavor. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of different flavors out there, apparently. You know, not... And it's not just THC. And not... Yeah, no, no. No, no. I'm some talking about just straight flavors. Yeah. And people, they love the pipe. Flavored by... <laughs> they love the pipe. Stay away from the pipe, damn it. Well, you got to be careful what you want to use the pipe for. Right. Because some things... You, Careful what you put in your pipe and smoke it, because some things put are more dangerous. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, Put right? that in your pipe and smoke it. Some things are a little bit more mm, habit-forming, shall we say, than others. What do you smoke in your pipe, Ed? Mm, eh, you know, I, I'm, I'm just, I like a little pot, you know, like a little flower. A little flower? Yeah. You like a little flower, do you? Do you like to roll around in the flower? <laughs> and look for the wet spot? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Just saying, so, just saying. Give me a shot of the S and P. Let's see what's okay, going on there. Think, like, you know what? It, it, more of is it is it a case where we're looking at the cannabis industry sort of bouncing along and lockstep to the S and P? Okay, we're going to take a look. S P X splash or not splash colon C no no U S. Uh oh, did I get it right? Did I get I'm it right? So. Da, 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 da. Okay. Da, 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 da. Wow. Wow. Okay, so so here we go. This is intraday. Th this is this is uh, this is a three month, but but you know just to keep the viewers that watch this on a regular basis. So there's the high, there's the failed test. Then we we roll down here. We got under extremely oversold very quickly under the band under the Ballinger band. There two days, big rally yesterday a fail and today a continuation of the downward trend. And now this this Ballinger band is starting to head south which I think is ominous. Because mm. when it starts to head south like it did here, it, it went for another, you know, couple month, couple, uh, month and a half. So I'm not saying that's gonna happen. We really haven't done anything here in three months. Like mm. that is, you know, you got all kinds of symmetry here, big smile, put a nose on the guy. Eh, eh, mm. eh. Mm. So what, what do you say? I say, well, we got a down day from a very high point, And every time we fail, I don't think new highs are in the, are in the uh, cards. No kidding. Well, look, it, tomorrow we could go up a thousand, you know, the, you know how this thing works. Yeah. They could, cut, they could do something crazy and, the, and we could have a 100-point rally in the S&P. There's a company called Lab Effects that has introduced a solution to the recent vape ingredient scare. And uh, Lab Effects calls itself the longest running terpene laboratory in the cannabis industry which is in interesting in its own right. Um, but the cut, which is a vape dilutant manufactured by Lab Effects, is a pure plant-derived terpene that they say is ideal for reducing the viscosity of cannabis extracts without compromising the quality of the vape liquid or posing health risks when heated and inhaled by consumers. That strikes me as a very risky proposition to go out and say, our vapes... Yeah, how, how do they know that so fast? Like, the, the, these things been tested on people for 20 years? No. Well, that's just it. I don't think that... 
we are clear on what the cause of the hospitalizations and the deaths have been exactly. Is this a Canadian? Was this a Canadian statement? No, this is from this is a company from Golden, Colorado called and Lab Effects. And I mean, is the FDA going to be all over their ass for saying that? Well, that remains to be seen. You know, they're not the fastest moving uh, torpedo in the tube, so to speak. But uh, mm. maybe the fastest moving turtle. Yeah. Like a fat, like a, a speedy turtle would be like about, what, a mile and a half an hour or something like that? Well, it depends how fast it can go. I mean, if you put it on, you know, big They can wheels, swim faster than they can walk. And you put a little rocket on You ever notice that? Um, put a little rock. Well, I don't think they or, can walk. Or feed them lots of grass and then they'll, they'll shit their way into it's that pr propulsion. propulsion. Right. Anal propulsion? <laughs> No, that's just getting disgusting again. All right, uh, let's see what else. Um, Kronos is just just uh, I'm just watching it go by 11:40. I don't think that's been much lower than 11:40. Pull up a chart of Kronos. Yeah, let's do that. What do we think is going to happen to Kronos? Well, it, look, it, it's got lots of money, but I mean, at some point, are they going to deploy a whole lot of money? Are they going to deploy that money? Yeah, you would think so. Takes money. Okay. A whole lot of money. Look at this. Ever since we've had our little rally, this... Freaking, look at Dianamed. Twelve and a half cents. Yeah, I... I oh. That looks like a little bit of a... Uh, uh, like some of these things... Tail, like a little pig's tail. Like wee, a little little wee, curlicue. Wee, wee, wee. Um, some of these companies look like they're about to fall right off the board. Like, they can go to zero. Oh, and they, some of them will. Well, they're, they're, going. they're going to go to zero. Unless not all of them. No, no. The, there's, there's, a, there's a, there, and, and every time one does, there's going to be more pie left for everybody else. More pie. But there's, oh, there's a new crop of cannabis deals every single week. Uh, yeah, but not as much. They're not coming to the market like they used to because they can't raise money like right. they used to. Right. Well, that's just it. And the ones that are most recently able to raise money, call it. They were still raising money pretty well in May, June. Right. Uh, then it started to dry up in the summer. So those guys probably have a year's worth of capital, maximum. And so I think that this real slowdown is going to start to happen in January 2020. That's when you're going to see, like, suddenly, oh, there's been no IPOs. Um, right. Yeah, so uh, the, further to the Afria statement regarding Emblem. Uh, if you're curious, it was uh, Afria issued a statement in regards to Alifia Health's termination of the company's wholesale cannabis agreement with Emblem Corp. Now, if you remember, Alifia uh, acquired Emblem Corp. They merged, and uh, Afria says they're disappointed that Alifia has chosen to terminate its agreement the company had every intention of fulfilling its obligations. As a large shareholder of Alifia, Afria made good faith efforts to ensure continuation of the agreement. Did you know that uh, Afria was a large shareholder of uh, Alifia? Really? Now, yeah. Now, doesn't that just complicate the whole thing? It's yeah, like... sure does. It's no longer an arm's length tiff. It's a family feud. Family feud. Yeah. So this is, uh, this is interesting. Um, the real case on that, well, you know, we have actually uh, the CEO of uh, Afria is going to be joining us, uh, I believe it's next week. And it'll be the first time we've talked to, the, talked to Afria since uh, Vic Neufeld left. Um, what was that, 2012? No, that was 2018. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Boy, a yeah, free is the kind of the gift that keeps on giving, starting to look, you know, like... A lot of the... Uh, look at this Hexo go by at 487. Yeah, well, Hexo's, uh, Hexo's another one that's definitely they, feeling the downdraft, the undertow. They, they lost their CFO, right? Yeah, they lost their CFO, but not only that, they got a double downgrade. Double downgrade? Double downgrade. Is that like going to the ice cream store and getting a double dip? Well, they went from buy rating to uncertainty, which was categorized by the Globe and Mail as a double downgrade. Sounds to me like it's a withdrawal of the recommendation would be a more accurate let's way to just, phrase it. Uh, that's just let's just opinion. spend a minute on this chart. I've got a couple things I want to point out on this. Uh, so we went, we went below the bands on the tail, the two candles with tail well below the bands, 
and look at this skyrocket back but look at right back down here and we're almost across from there and i think if and the bollinger bands are widening again what company are you talking about hexel oh that's hexo yeah yeah hey, hey look look this is brutal. I mean, if, you, if you're holding big positions in these things, and we said this three, four weeks ago, if you're losing sleep, pair Well, don't pair forget, they gave them, uh, what was it, 11.5 million shares they gave to Molson to do that deal. Oh, yeah. And the, those 11.5 million warrants, was it? Did they have a hold period on them? Would uh, Molson be selling them at this point? Let's check it out on SETI, because that would make them, oh, would that make them an insider, 11.5 million shares? Yeah, probably. Yeah, let's go Probably, check Probably, uh, so we'll especially when you've got a, you know. Yeah, so I'm going to SETI, which is the system, uh, the elect system of electronic document. What does it stand for again? SETI stands for? System of Electronic Documentation of Insiders. Oh. So view the summary reports. This is, uh, feel free to be looking locked on my screen. This is, uh, this is where you go to find out what insiders are doing, which... It was recently brought to my attention that most people don't know this exists. Whoops. Uh, so let's go to, we'll go to issuer report history. Or no, sorry, insider if information by issuer. We're going to put in uh, Hexo. And we're going to go with a date range of January 1st, 2018, just to cover the full range up to today. And let's see who's still an insider of Hexo. Um, okay, what's the total number of shares outstanding on Hexo, Ed? Ah, uh, it's got to be 100 million. Oh, is it? Well, I, you know what? Look, I'll, I'll tell you quickly, okay? Yeah. I, I can go. The, I can do it really fast on my cheat machine. Hmm. Cheat machine? What the hell's a cheat machine? Uh, okay, so so I said 100 million. So let's take a look here, fundamentals, and we've got. Uh, I I was wrong. It's 256 million. So it's capped at a billion three. Really? Still capped at a billion three after being cut in half. 256 million. So That's what it says. So 11.5 million shares would not an insider make. No, not not even. Okay, so Michael Patrick Monahan, who was the CFO. He had 325,000 options. Wow. Yeah. Which I imagine have been canceled now that he's quit, unless there's a fight to be had over those. But uh, yeah, Sebastian still has 5.3 million shares. Oh, wait a sec. Has he got more in another account here? Oh, he's got 8 million in another company. Look at that. It, look, the, the you know what? I just look at that, and I don't know what their what their uh, their uh, profit landscape looks like. But yeah, you know, there's still a lot of these companies that have seriously got some serious valuations, and they're not delivering. Right. That that's a that's a scary proposition. Hmm. But you know, to, to to short properly, you still need lots of capital. You just can't go in there and and. Uh, well, and you have to have the ability to hold the position until it matures. Well, which you can't if you can't sure borrow, yeah, you, you don't know. You know, you may be forced to buy in. I mean, it's a, the best way to do it would be to short the, uh, an ETF or a, to go long a, a negative ETF. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's wrap up the day with another look at the uh, cannabis charts here. And, okay. And uh, I want to look at the CSE, which is like we said earlier, is the home of all of the U.S. listed uh, companies, the U.S. companies trading in Canada. And uh, so Green Thumb Industries gained 1%, up 13 cents to 12.13. Harvest Health and Recreation keeps heading lower, down another almost 10% to 3.42, losing another 35 cents. Seems to be, we tried to get Harvest Health and Recreation was supposed to come on today, but they did not. Uh, Cresco Labs, 26 off 26 cents, down 3%. True Leaf Cannabis tacked on 2.74%. So we're starting to see a bit of, uh, you know, differentiation among the companies. Look at Ignite, still holding 234 a share. They just raised 50 million bucks in a debenture. At 8% and, and uh, with a three-year term. Wow. So, so that's, that's $4 million a year they got to come up with for, for interest. Wow. 
Just for interest sake. Just for interest sake. All right, and uh, look at Eviana Health lost 70% of its value today. Lots of companies you losing. How would you find out who put that money into that? Uh, well, uh, you look at the press release, it should say it, who. It's not. I looked at it, I looked at two, one on the website and really? one, because I was curious, I thought, who's going to put, maybe it was a, 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 a private placement. Yeah, it could have been. Like it wouldn't be one Lindor. Could be. It could be. But you never know. Anyways, that's our show for today. So don't forget to sign up at our website at MidasLetter.com and don't forget to uh, hit the little alert button if you want to know when we're coming on the air, which is generally 3 o'clock every weekday. And uh, other than that, we'll see you tomorrow.